Aloha and welcome to Knitted Paradise, where the needles are clicking and the yarn is squishy. My name is Lucia and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Pearl of the Pacific. Today is Friday, October 7th, and this is episode 131. Hello everyone, I am back from my visit to Hawaii to see my parents and um, other family there and friends and I had an absolutely wonderful time. I had every intention of recording and it just didn't happen while I was there. We just kind of ran out of time or other things were in the way. Um, yeah, so I tried to share as many pictures and stuff on Instagram as I could and I'll put some at the end of this episode, but um, things just got in the way and Either. I was think I wanted to record outside because it's beautiful, but it was windy and then I was worried about the sound and anyway, it just didn't end up happening. But I'm back and I have lots of wonderful things to show you. So let's jump right in. First of all, below the conch shell, I have an announcement that the kit, the Forest Dreams kit that I talked about a few weeks ago, is now available on onetwistedtree.com. There are still some kits available, so get them while you can. That includes a shawl sized bag from uh, Stephanie of the Rusted Stitch. It includes a beautifully dyed skein of yarn from Danny of One Twisted Tree. And of course the shawl that I designed. And the kit is, I think it's 50, it's 50 something dollars. And it's available if you go to onetwistedtree.com, you'll see the link that says Forest Dreams Kit. Click on that, boom, there it is. And um, you'll get a coupon code to download my pattern for free from Ravelry. So that's how you get the pattern and then the yarn in the bag will be shipped to you. And it's a very wonderful kit. I would show you but I shipped the um, shawl off to Danny so she could have it for pictures and she was doing a show so that's why I don't have it. Maybe I'll include a picture here so you can see the um, see everything. And it is, it is, you should totally get it. It's the perfect shawl size bag for fall. Um, it's sturdy. It's, um, you can fold it over if you want or stand it up. And, um, yeah, it's great. And the yarn is just divine. I was, um, trying to think of like what the perfect yarn would be for my shawl design, even though I hadn't come up with the shawl design yet. And I explained it to Danny and she nailed it like blew it out of the park. It was way better than I ever imagined. Like there's depth and it, it looks like the very beginning of fall to me where it's like those deep dark greens with like flecks, flecks of brown in there because um, the leaves are just starting to turn. And yeah, anyway, so you should definitely go check that out. And yeah, so that's available now. OneTwistedTree.com as I said. Um, the other announcement is I'm in a slightly different location as you have seen. Um, I've only been back a few days and my cat is glued to me, like literally glued to me. I don't think I have slept a minute without having him like on my head or plastered against me and I didn't really want to put him in the bathroom and so I could let the bird out so I could be in that room. Plus that room's a little cluttered right now so I thought I'm just going to put myself against a wall in the living room and um, yeah and plus there's a nice table right here so I can show you, show you things. So the cat may make an appearance because um, normally he's off in the bathroom so that we can let the bird out. Um, but that just, it was a lot of work and I had this tiny little window and I was like, you know what, I'm going to record a podcast. <laughs> so here it is. All right, on the island, I have one thing. I have the Asana shawl by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And it's one of the shawl series. And of course I'm right in the middle of a row. But I'm doing this out of, this is Hedgehog, excuse me, Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles in the Pistachio colorway that I think I showed a few weeks ago. And so I wound that up, and I actually took that on my trip, but I didn't end up casting it on until I got back. But this is where I'm at. I think I just passed the 5% mark. Yeah. And I realized I did some funky increases, so I'm actually taking back to fix them. Somehow I was knitting along, I was like, oh, that's nice, and then blah, 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 and then I'm like, wait, I'm on a right side. Why am I doing a wrong side increase? And so things just got flipped somewhere because half of it was right and half of it wasn't. It was totally my fault. I just wasn't paying attention. 
as knitting it, but I love it so far. I love this yarn. I love the way it's knitting up. Totally my colors. So that's going to be the main body of the shawl. And then when I run out of that, I'm either going to use this, which is um, Madeline Tosh Prairie, or um, the rest of my Anzula Meridian. So we're gonna see. I'd really like to use this, but I don't know if there's enough, so we'll see. I mean, I'm just using this till it's out and then that um, when I'm done with that, so we'll see. I'm doing the large size, so. I said I worked on that a bit today, and I'll probably work on that more this weekend, but I'm slowly knitting my way through the Shawl Society. I have this design number four, no, this is design number three, and five just came out. And I haven't done four yet. So I'm like trying to crank through them. <laughs> I have tons of yarn in my stash that I can use for them. So that's really nice. Um, either that or I, like I bought this one to go with the other one. So I'm using up things in my stash and just adding to it. And that's good for me. This is the only thing that's on the island right now that's active. Um, yeah. So I had a lot of things set sail while I was gone, and one of the things is my boathouse, which is a sweater by Alicia Plummer, which I'm wearing. And um, the body is out of uh, Lost City Knits Pathway Sock Yarn in the Spring Shoots colorway. And here you can stand. I'm like, my show notes are over here on the computer. I'll stand up so you can see. It's a lovely tonal green color, and um, the top is yarn picked up at a local yarn stop store. I can't remember what it is. It's from Ba, I think, in like the La Perla colorway. I don't remember. I, of course, I have these blanks in my show notes that were notes to me myself to fill them in, and I didn't fill them in, of course. But that's what the cream is, and um, then the uh, Lost Sydney Knits Pathway Sock. And I have a bunch left over, so I may try to see if I can find like a two-color shawl to do the leftovers, because I really like the colors together. Um, I, I did break into the second skein of the green, but not that much. So I still have a good chunk of both of those left over. So that's the plan for those. And of course, it's in the other room. I could just go get it, but oh well. Um, the other thing I finished were the Gravel Socks by Nina Phillip out of Madeline Tosh Sock in Magic, which I picked up at a local yarn store in California when I was there visiting my brother. Actually, he picked out the yarn, and um, I knit them on the trip and then gifted them to him on the way back. So I'll insert, a, I took like two quick pictures uh, as I was packing so that I could just have a record of that. So I'll put that in here. And that's yarn that he picked out. It actually matched the shirt he was wearing, which was kind of fun. And um, it was like a blue shirt with pink writing on it. And so on the way back, we had a, um, a layover in California. And so he picked us up from the airport and we had breakfast and took a nap. And then he took us back to, um, back to the airport. And um, so I gave him the socks because I saw him, you know, it was first thing in the morning. So he wore them that day and he texted me later. He's like, I love my socks. So he, wore, he actually wore the shirt. Um, I was like, oh, I should wear the shirt with the socks. And he's like, oh, I should. So he wore the shirt with the socks and he loves them. So that was really great. Uh, I didn't get to wash them or block them, but I was like, whatever, he'll still wear them, wear them and they'll be fine. And so I finished those. So I started and finished those really. And then I also finished my exploration station by Stephen West. And that is out of, um, mostly it's Two Guys Yarn Company. This thing's huge. Ta-da! So this has been, I bought the first, the first pairings of yarn at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat back in February. And then I didn't like the combination, so I ordered two more skeins to replace the two that I didn't like. And then um, I started knitting, I took those on my trip because I was like, I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna knit it because I want it, I want it. Um, 
and one of them just wasn't working. It was too close to one of the other colors, so I ended up replacing it with something else, and I love it. So the Two Guys Yarn Company is the yellow, which is solar power, the green, which is emerald falls, and the contrast color, which is um, it's a really gray purple. It's just like, it's got this hint of purple. It's mostly gray and a hint of purple, and it's called Thunderstorm, and I love it. It's a great color. The other color I had was like a periwinkle, and the purple in in the thunderstorm and the purple and the periwinkle were just too close. And so I, I went um, to a local yarn store near where my brother lives. Actually, he knew where it was because he used to live even closer to it. But I picked up this gray. I was looking for a blue, but they didn't have like a tonal blue. So I picked up this tonal gray and I think it's Madeline Tosh, like Tosh sock or something. It's a little different. Um, this one, or the, Two Guys Yarn Company, the standard sock, is their BFL nylon, and this one I think is just 100% Superwash Merino, um, but it didn't seem to mind. But I also, I learned how to do brioche stitch, which was actually really cool. I had a lot of fun with it. Like once you get in that rhythm, I had no problems with it, um, which was fun. So I really enjoyed that. And then there's the sassy slip section, and then the striping section. And then the chevrons on the border. And by the end of it, I think I had like almost 500 stitches. That bind off was epic. <laughs> That's like all I did that plane ride. Because we had quite a few plane rides. Um, four on the way there and four on the way back to be exact. And um, yeah, getting, ho getting to Hawaii is no joke. <laughs> it's exhausting. But totally worth it. Anyway, so one of the plane rides I spent basically just sleeping and doing this bind off. And I think I did a bit of reading because I had a little bit of time left over. But that bind off was pretty epic. Because it's an I-cord bind off. I'd never done one, but it was actually super easy. And I really liked it. So there you get a better color sense of the thunderstorm. It's still, yeah, on camera it looks more dark gray than... Um, in person you can see the purple undertones but on the camera it's hard to see it but I love how this turned out it's absolutely gigantic I haven't I woven the ends of which there are an epic ton you can see them I haven't clipped them yet but there are a ton of ends so that was that also took a while so it was the bind off and all the ends that was the last flight basically and uh yeah, so I gotta I got clip all those off now. And, uh, but those are, that is done. And I'm very happy with that. I just need to take pictures of it. I just, just took it off the blocking mats. Um, I came, we got home Tuesday night and Wednesday I had taken off work because I knew I was going to be a jet lagged mess, which I pretty much was. But I blocked this and I blocked that and um, you know, did all the laundry and cleaning and stuff that you do when you get home from a trip. But um, yeah, so that is that. So those are the three things I finished on my trip, which was great. I took a few more things, um, I just didn't get to them. That's okay. From the mainland, I got yarn from the yarn shop in California. So I got the yarn that I um, used for my brother's socks, the gray that I used in the exploration station, and I had to get a souvenir skein because those were, I mean, those were kind of souvenir skeins, but that one was for a specific project and the other one was, I told Louis, pick out, um, you know, pay out a skein for a pair of socks. And then I asked them, what is something that I can't get anywhere else? And so they had a ton, actually. So the store, if you're wondering, was called the Altered Stitch. And they had a ton of either exclusive colorways or um, yarn dyers that uh, basically just sell in their store and on Etsy and they're kind of hard to get. Um, but anyway, I picked this one out and it is, the color is called Fable and the base is called Glider. It's a super rush merino nylon. And yeah, Fable. 
and I loved it. I just thought it was so cool. My brother actually helped me pick this one out. I had my eye on a few and I said, which one should I get? And he liked this one. I just liked how varied it was. And I think this is gonna make some super cool socks or something. We'll find out. But that's what I picked up as my souvenir skein. And I had the wine the other two because obviously I'd be used to them, but I kept this as a skein because I didn't know it was gonna be yet. And so that was it for from the mainland. I also picked up something on the island. So we now have a from the island section, well, at least for this week. We're not gonna have it every week. But I was wandering around the farmer's market with my mom and some friends, and um, there was yarn in the middle of the farmer's market, I, which I had never seen before. I'd been to this farm, well, I guess I haven't been to it in a really long time because I haven't been home in a really long time. But, um, so I got some yarn from some local um, fiber people. So I picked up a skein of Romney. That was, they dyed this. So I got a skein of Romney. And it's about a fingering weight. It's a two ply it looks like. And I got a skein of alpaca. And this is just natural undyed. And this is fiber provided by Misty and Sugar. And it says there's about 100 yards in here. Oh, it says a sport weight. Anyway, this fiber was grown on the big island with no dyes or chemicals used, so it's natural. And um, I'm going to put them together, which is kind of, a, I think, an odd combination fiber-wise, but they're about the same weight. The, um, I think they were definitely spun at the same mill and um, spun the same way. Um, but I think this will provide some warmth and this will provide some softness that um, will make a really nice hat. So my plan is to make a colorwork hat with these two. But there were two ladies there selling their stuff and so I got a skein from each of them. Which I thought was super cool. I did take a picture. I meant to post it but somehow it's on my camera and I haven't gotten it to my phone yet because that's the easier place to post things from. So I will find that picture somewhere but they had a whole bunch of stuff. But I just picked out two. And yeah, I just thought it was so cool. I, I was not expecting to find yarn on Big Island at all. And um, I actually found it in another place. And they actually had a spinning wheel for sale. I took a picture of it, it was so odd. It was like, there's a spinning wheel here. It was like a secondhand kind of antique store and they had a, um, it's an Ashford traditional, like it was a newer wheel. It wasn't like an ancient antique wheel. It was like a pretty modern wheel. I mean, I know wheels in general, people think like, I mean, obviously we know that they're modern, but um, I think they're more seen as like an antique thing. I just thought it was interesting that it was in this random store. And they also had a whole bunch of, they had a bunch of Angora bunny, I think. Um, I didn't end up getting any of that because um, I'd already gotten that. But um, anyway, I just thought that was really odd and really cool. I was like, oh, there are fiber, fiber people here in Hawaii. I mean, I know there are, but I just hadn't seen them. It's not as prevalent, you know, in Hawaii than it is here because, you know, more people knit here because it's more of a necessity in Hawaii. It doesn't get that cold. So anyway, slight tangent there. Um, that's it for the knitting. So let's move on to from my hale. Uh, I wanted to share a few things about Hawaii. I had put up a thread in Ravelry for people to ask questions about Hawaii and I got a couple so I thought I would answer those here. Um, one person was going to travel to Oahu very soon and was asking if I had any um, insights. and. I grew up on the big island, which is um, the biggest of the island, which is not where Honolulu is. Honolulu is the capital, and a lot of people associate the big island with the capital because people are like, oh, it's the biggest island, it must have the capital, but it does not. Honolulu is on the island of Oahu, and it is like a few up in the chain of islands, and um, that's where the big city is. That's where Waikiki is, that's where... Um, yeah, big city. It's it's a city of Honolulu. And I've been there a few times because I have a lot of family and friends there. Um, but mostly I go just to be with family and friends. 
Um, but I did send her a couple tips of things that I've been to that were really cool that I don't think most people go to. I mean, they go to Waikiki because that's kind of the obvious thing. Um, but the Iolani Palace is really cool because that's where the, um, the last reigning monarchy lived and you can take tours of it and it's just a really cool piece of Hawaiian history. And the Polynesian Cultural Center is also a really cool thing to check out. Um, I've been there I think once and um, yeah, it's just another history thing that I think is, um, I mean it's still kind of touristy, but it's not, um, it's still, it's still very authentic and um, I like that. Um, the other thing was someone asked me about food from Hawaii and there are a lot of foods there that you cannot get here and trust me I ate a lot of them. I ate as many of them as possible while I was there. Um, one of them is papaya, um, Hawaiian papaya, which is different than Mexican papaya because over here you can get other kinds of papaya but it's not the same thing. So I ate a lot of papaya. I obviously can't, I can't take, you can't take it out of the state so I couldn't bring it back to show you. Um, there was a lot of pineapple there. There's pineapple here, so it's not that that much of a difference. Um, sushi is also really good over there, so I ate some of that. Just raw fish in general is really good in Hawaii. Um, or just fish in general, not necessarily raw. I like to eat it raw just because it's good. I mean, it's good cooked, it's good raw. Either way, it's fine with me. Um, in terms of snacks I brought back were... Um, let me get these. So these are some things that I think they're just, I don't even know where they came from, but you can't get them anywhere else. But this is what is called Lihing Mui Mango. And it is dried mango with Lihing powder on it. Now Lihing powder, I should do some research. I think it's from plum seed. Anyway, it's kind of spicy, kind of sour, and you um, sprinkle it. On the leaking. And I got this from a local shop that is right next to the elementary middle school that I went to that my mom teaches at actually. And um, she makes all her own stuff. And we used to go over there all the time after school to get snacks. So I went to her and got some. But I got a big package because I was like, I'm stocking up. This stuff's good. And it's really odd when you first taste it because you're like, this is kind of weird. But it's really good. I really like it. It's kind of the mango brings the sweetness and the leaning powder brings the sourness, and I really like the combination of those. And another thing that I'm not seeing out of Hawaii is something called arare, which is a Japanese thing. And it's these, um, I don't know what you call these little cracker things. And they're covered in. Um, what you would call soy sauce, but in Hawaii we call it shoyu, and little bits of seaweed. And they're a little bit sweet, just a tiny bit, like not that much. And um, yeah, they, I mean, it tastes like crackers with a little bit of saltiness from the seaweed and from the shoyu. And um, yeah, I guess they're more salty than sweet. They're not, I haven't had one in a really long time because I can't have gluten, so sad me. But um, I got some of these for my husband to try because he hadn't tried them. But you can put leaking powder on anything. Um, I'm looking down here in the pile. I got some gummy worms with leaking powder on them. You can put it on anything. You can just buy the powder too. Um, if you really want to get intense, you can buy the seeds that the leaking powder comes from. And those are really sour. And you just suck on them. You don't chew them. They're, um, they're super sour though. <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> didn't want to subject my husband to that. I was like, I'll start you with the lilying powder on something. Um, another thing that is from Hawaii is mac nuts, which I'm sure you've seen mac nut before. And they grow all over the place. They actually grow in the playground where I grew up. Um, and this is what mac nut looks like. Because it's like most of a mac nut. And um, these are actually roasted and covered in sea salt. But you can get any flavor or you can get them raw. But um, the cool thing is about mac nuts that you don't usually see is that on the outside there's like a more fleshy green covering that you can kind of peel off. It's kind of like an orange peel. It's thinner than that, but it's pretty tough. 
So you get that off, and then inside there's this brown shell that you have to crack in order to get to the nut. So there's kind of like two layers. And growing up on the playground, you would have to find the perfect rock to put this, the, the, the pod in, the, the, the seed, I guess, in. And then get the perfect rock to crush it, and you had to crush it at like just the right amount of force to crack the brown covering without damaging the nut. Because you could also just smash it to pieces, but that wasn't the goal. You still wanted to eat the nut. So we spent hours on the playground trying to figure this out. But um, anyway, I picked up a bunch of mac nuts when I was there. Another interesting fact I learned when I was there is that Hawaii is the only state that grows coffee, which I thought was really odd. I thought other states grew coffee. But um, if you drink coffee, you know that Kona coffee is a, is a big deal. And um, so this coffee is grown in Kailua Kona and there's coffee farms everywhere. And um, what makes it interesting is that Kona doesn't get a lot of rain, but they get this like afternoon, like two o'clock shower of just like a nice steady rain for like 20 minutes. It doesn't happen every day, but it happens a lot where it's just like downpour. Not Sometimes it's downpour for like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and sometimes it's like a lighter rain. But it gets just enough rain that the coffee really likes it there. And um, yeah, so that was an interesting fact that I learned that I didn't know. I thought other states had grown coffee. I guess I just grew up in a state where coffee's everywhere, and so I hadn't really thought about the fact that it's not grown in any other state in the U.S. I mean, obviously it's grown in other places because there are other coffees, but I think just that warm weather, the warm afternoon rain, it really likes that. So it was an interesting fact about coffee in general. Um, let's see what other kinds of interesting foods. Uh... One thing that I didn't get a chance to try, but I really, or I didn't get a chance to eat it when I was there, but I really like it, it's something called poke, which is um, like cubes of sashimi or raw fish, usually uh, mahi mahi or ahi tuna, and um, covered in shoyu or um, sometimes you've got other types of seaweed in there, sometimes you've got other spices or salt. Um, you can, I mean, there's multiple combinations of things you can put in there, but I think that's a very kind of Japanese Hawaiian thing. And um, I'm, I'm pretty sure they have it in Japan too. A lot of the, uh, there's a lot of Japanese influence in the food. Um, another thing that's, okay, I'm just gonna be like talking about food for 10 minutes. This is, <laughs> sorry guys, I hope you're not watching this like right before dinner and you're getting really hungry. But, um, Kalua pork is the um, good old luau, but it's luau food. We'll just talk about luau food for a minute here. So they cook the pig in a um, underground oven called an emu, uh, not to be confused with the confused with the bird, which is an emu. They're spelt the same and pronounced slightly different. It's really confusing. Anyway, so the emu is an underground oven, which. Um, they put hot rocks in there and then either banana leaves or um, what we call tea leaves in Hawaii. I don't know what they're called, if they're, and if they're, you can find them other places. Anyway, so there's leaves and burlap and hot rocks and um, a pig you put in the ground. Um, you can put anything else. I mean, you can cook vegetables, you can cook turkeys, you can cook anything basically in an emu. And it gives this very unique flavor it's really good. It's really good. And um, so that's one of the classic luau foods. Another one is poi, which is mashed taro, which is a type of potato. This is another thing that I ate quite a bit of when I was there that you can't get anywhere else that I've seen is something called taro. At least you can get like taro chips, but they're just not the same. But it's kind of, it's not quite a sweet potato, but it's, um, it's not quite, like, it's a purple potato. And it's a little sweeter than a normal potato, but it's not quite sweet potato. There, there's a difference because there's also a Hawaiian sweet potato, which is a purple potato, and um, but that's sweeter than taro. It's like this whole classification I don't even know. 
anyway, but you mash it up and you put, um, you put some sugar and salt in there and water and um, the one time I've made poi, this is what I remember. That was a really, really long time ago. Um, but you just mash it until it's like this pasty consistency and it goes really well with the Kahlua pork. And so those two flavors go together really well. Um, so this is a two major luau foods that aren't, that are unusual outside of Hawaii, I guess. Um, I mean, I could go on about Hawaiian foods for a really long time, but I think you're probably either getting really hungry and have gone to get a snack or getting bored. Um, yeah, so those, those are some interesting Hawaiian foods. Um, in terms of, I think she also asked about flowers and um, plants. Maybe we'll address those a different time because obviously I've spent forever talking about foods. <laughs> but there are quite a bit of those um, as well. But maybe I'll go into those another time. But thank you all for being patient. I know I've been spreading these episodes out more than I've been intending to. But I have some plans on making this more regular and also um, of changing things up a little bit and um, to make things more exciting for me and for you and in um, in the future so that's the plan so thank you all for sticking with me and I hope you all have a great week since I plan to be back next week all right <laughs> bye See?